Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your trusted weather source here, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Friday, May 9th, 2025. Now, before we get going, I always like to say thank you and welcome aboard to any new subscribers here on the channel. And if you're not officially a follower or subscriber just yet, please hit that subscribe button in that lower right hand corner. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And if you appreciate the support, please leave me a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. It does help support the channel. All right, let's go take a look at the big picture over here as we're looking at our satellite imagery. Your eyes instantly kind of drawn to the fact that we got some pretty good cluster of thunderstorms out here in the Gulf of Mexico. And it is definitely rainy and damp up here across the northeast, but a lot of the country not really not looking too bad out there as uh, we're looking at a fairly decent weekend for a big part of the country. So we've got our service map right now. There's our low pressure system here along the Gulf Coast, and this is going to be a slow mover, folks. So you folks here across the southeast, we're going to be dumping some of this Gulf moisture into the southeast, and it's going to stay wet here, uh, really kind of lingering into next week. So just uh, keep ready and keep those umbrellas handy. Now, the good news is areas that go over towards Florida, like the Florida Peninsula, it's been on a bit of a dry spell. They're going to get some much-needed rains into those zones. So let's go ahead and talk about the rain. Let's go in a little bit closer. We'll take a look at some of this heavier rain here along the Gulf Coast. You kind of see that stretching from New Orleans. Uh, back over toward Houston. It's going to be kind of a wet and dreary day across Louisiana, and this will be encroaching a little bit further east going into areas of Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, Georgia, uh, as we go through the weekend. It's going to be slow moving. The southeast is going to see some copious amounts of rain as this low pressure system is going to be pretty slow to kick on out, and that's going to be keep kicking in some high rain chances here over the next uh, several days to have to watch here. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our the storm prediction center. We got, do have a couple areas we're going to have to watch here uh, for the next uh, next few days here, just right, mostly right along the Gulf Coast. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Let's go ahead and look at your day one outlook here for today as we're looking again. Uh, a couple of pockets to watch. We were talking about areas here along the, along the Carolina coast to watch in there. And, of course, down here across Florida, just a site risk is severe. Got the marginal risk here coming from Louisiana back over toward the Carolinas. Again, nothing uh, too bad. Maybe an isolated severe thunderstorm that'll pulse up, but nowhere near as active as what we saw yesterday. We had a few hundred uh, severe thunderstorm warnings across uh, a lot of areas of Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, the Carolinas, where we had it pretty rough yesterday. Not expecting that for today. And then there's still a general thunderstorm threat here back toward the west here from Wisconsin, uh, back over toward Wyoming and into Colorado and New Mexico. So not looking too bad there. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this. We'll break down the categories here. We're going to first take a look at the tornado threat, relatively low. Uh, could see a few water spouts perhaps coming in out of the Gulf here from Apalachicola over toward New Orleans, watching right through there. And of course, along the east coast of Florida here from Jacksonville, stretching down toward uh, Palm Bay. So right up in there, could see an isolated tornado or two. But again, very isolated. Nothing that's going to be too widespread to have to worry about. Now, the wind threat's going to be a little bit higher. Obviously, we got to deal with those two little pockets there with that slight risk as we're talking about here. So we're down right near the Kitty Hawk area, uh, looking right through there. And again, down here along the Daytona Beach area. Could see some strong gusty winds, 60 mile per hour winds, things like that. Everybody else about into the brown. That's a 5% risk there. And then as far as the hail threat, uh, that definitely has come down. We had a lot of hail yesterday. Not expecting nearly as much today. Uh, looks like the hail threat uh, highest will be here along the, along the Carolina coast. And everybody else generally looking at, you know, pea size, quarter size hail in that brown zone here uh, going in for today. How about the next several days? Let's look at your category breakdown here for uh, going into your Saturday and Sunday. So let's look at your uh, Saturday again, uh, looking at a couple of pockets we're going to watch here uh, going into your Saturday. We've got some storms here across Montana uh, to kind of watch out here toward the west. And then, of course, we got here a little bit down here toward Florida. Continue to watch for your Saturday. And going into your Sunday, again, we still got a couple of pockets here to watch across Mississippi, uh, down here toward Florida to watch. And again, that other pocket still coming into the Dakotas uh, from Montana and into uh, North Dakota going in towards your Sunday. So that's what we'll be watching there as we go through this upcoming weekend. Now, because of the proximity of that low across the Gulf Coast, that's going to be the main uh, flooding concern here uh, for the days ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and step you through this here over the next five days. Let me get this reset here. As we're going to be talking about the Northeast, really, and uh, going into the Southeast. Those are our two target zones here. So this is for your Friday. Uh, you see there across the Gulf Coast and over toward Florida and also across the Northeast. So those are going to be our two uh, problem zones right up in here and, of course, down here across the Southeast. Southeast is really going to see a lot of rain here over the next several days. Watch that time camps here going up to day two. This is going in towards your Saturday. Again, kind of the same areas. Sunday, uh, we're going to kind of highlight more into the southeast as you're going to see the yellow hair lighting up here across areas of, of, of Georgia and Florida. So Tallahassee out, out, up toward Albany, uh, getting into Macon, Savannah, getting some heavy rains there on your day three. Day four, we start to shift this out just a little bit here, uh, kind of more toward the Carolinas and down toward Florida. So 
heading up towards Charlotte, Columbia, South Carolina, Jacksonville, uh, getting getting on the heavy rain there. And then finally going out to day five, we start to shift out toward the mid-Atlantic as that low slowly but surely starts to kick on out and head up toward the northeast. So uh, you folks across the southeast get ready for several days of some uh, heavy rain amounts uh, in, that zero, in that zone. So let's go ahead and break this down. We're going to take you through the models here that will get you through the weekend. So let's first take a look at the North American model. This is an 84-hour model. Going to take you right through Monday. So as you can kind of see, we're watching a couple of systems here. Obviously, we got this big one down here along the Gulf Coast. We've got to watch here across the south. We have this exiting storm system up here out of the northeast, so you get a little bit of a break there from the rains there. And then we obviously got another system out here on the west coast to watch. Now, this one out on the west coast as it comes on in, this will be the one responsible for maybe giving us our initial uh, severe weather head up in, into here, uh, heading toward the 15th of the month. And then there's another one I'm going to show you on the European, that that one uh, may be a little more robust, and that one may set up a bigger severe weather going into the following weekend. So we got a couple areas to watch. So you can kind of see for the weekend, middle of the nation not looking bad, southeast looking definitely wet, northeast gets the day to clear out before the next low pressure kicks in going in toward next week. Now, as far as the rainfall totals are concerned, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, again, the big zones we're going to see, obviously, we get the, the exiting storm system here in the northeast. You see the heavy rains up here. The southeast seeing plenty of rain, and this is just going through Monday, and they'll get even more heavy rain, especially going into Monday, Tuesday, and into Wednesday uh, across the southeast. A little bit of rain here across the areas of, of the, the northwest. You're seeing a little bit of rain out here as well. Uh, those rainfall amounts don't look all that bad, maybe a quarter to a half inch out that way. But one to two inches here across the northeast, and basically two to four inches of the heavy rain here through the weekend across the southeast now going beyond the weekend going into monday and going into next week obviously the two systems we're going to be watching here is we've got the upper level low kind of dragging right in here this low going to track and getting on out of here we've got this disturbance here across the west coast this one's going to slide in and move up toward the areas up here toward the, the northern plains we'll have to watch for that initial round for severe weather so let's go ahead and take you forward here again as we kind of we'll see, we'll see this low kind of pull into the mid-atlantic here going in towards your tuesday morning looking a little damp and wet up there and sliding up into areas of philadelphia washington looking a little wet here uh, going into wednesday morning then going into wednesday that's when we got to watch that system again we watch that west coast system kind of swinging in this way so we'll have to watch up here we may get an initial round of some severe weather here going into the 14th and 15th uh, going into the 15th especially so let me take this forward here a little bit Again, you kind of see the storms there kind of flaring up here, uh, 14th. But nothing too robust, so, but, but you could see some severe weather into those zones here uh, going into the 14th and 15th. We'll have to watch. But it's going to be the one behind this one uh, going in toward beyond the 15th. It's this energy here going in toward Friday, this energy that's coming in toward the Pacific Northwest. This one here. This is going to be coming in here, and this is going to dive in, in, in this way, and this is going to generate low pressure right in here. And that's with the one that's got to be watched uh, substantially because that one looks like it's going to be a lot stronger. Uh, kind of unusual to see one as strong as this. And you'll see what I'm talking about. This is the latest European model on this. Watch as I take this forward here as we watch this go forward here through the weekend. Uh, going into that Friday and Saturday, we start to see low pressure there coming out into uh, Kansas. So we're seeing that, that coming in towards Sunday uh, morning. So here's our low pressure here. Uh, kind of getting itself organized right there. And it's going to deepen pretty rapidly. So we can see some snows across the Colorado Rockies. And then uh, obviously going to see some um, some pretty robust storms here. So there's the initial storms, 2 o'clock on Sunday to Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. So this is where our initial severe weather will start into this zone here. And then you see the snow is kind of falling back here across the Rockies uh, setting up. That's a 992 low, but it's going to get stronger than that. And this pulls up, pulls it to 989. That's pretty strong. And then you see that severe weather here kind of moving out toward Iowa, Minnesota, and coming back here toward Missouri. So this will be going in towards Sunday, the 18th. So uh, we got 17th, the 18th, and then this will slowly push off toward the east with the storm system here uh, going off to the east. We'll see that kind of set up here, and we'll see those storms flare up. There it is right there going into Monday. We'll watch the severe wet threat uh, shift off toward the east here from Ohio, stretching back in toward Louisiana while with that storm system going into the 19th. So we got several days to watch this. Uh, with that storm system, and then that, that eventually will pull on off and on out of the country. So that is our next substantial uh, uh, severe weather event. Looks like coming in toward the, the 17th, 18th, and 19th. That's the way it's tracking for the moment. Of course, uh, subject to change, obviously, because the models do change from run to run, and we'll see how that works out. So, But we do have the initial round on the 15th, and then you got this one coming in behind that. So things we're going to pick up here in May. And one of the main reasons we're going to see that, I want to point this out real quick, is a look at the contrast here, okay? We got the battle of the air masses. It's going to be colder out in the west, warmer here in the east. 
So we're going to see this nice little uh, setup here. We got temperatures here in the 90s here across Texas, in the 80s up into Nebraska. So we got nice warm air kind of going out ahead of this. And you got our battle drawings. You got this cold air kind of plowing into this. So as those uh, kind of meet up and they, and they battle it out, uh, that's where we're going to get those thunderstorms to really get flared up. So we got ample heat because we're getting into May. You know, things are getting pretty warm out there. Uh, so we got a lot of fuel for those thunderstorms. And then you, you kind of throw a little bit of jet energy, and that's a pretty strong little pressure system or you're going to see the possibility of some tornadoes with this. And look how it kind of cools off here as it goes off toward the east here. Uh, look at here. This is going toward Tuesday the 20th. I mean, that's a pretty good cold front here. Uh, not bad by this by this standard. As you can see, this, this cool air kind of going in. A lot of 30s and 40s in here. And notice it's in the 60s and 70s here out ahead of this. So uh, that's what's going to be setting up our severe weather threat uh, going in for those days. Again, reminding that's going to be the, heading from the 18th, 19th, and uh, finally the 20th as that begins to push off toward the east. And then the rainfall totals over the next 10 days. Uh, kind of giving you a snapshot here on the European. Looks like, again, the West Coast uh, or the East Coast. It looks like it'll stay the West here from New England all the way down to the Southeast, obviously. And some pretty good rains here across the Inner Mountain region coming out of the Rockies with that next storm system up there toward the toward the North. But a little bit on the dry side here across the Southwest. That's the way it's looking. Some decent rains out here on the West Coast as well uh, to watch. Generally looking at one to two inches here over the next 10 days. So let's go ahead and wrap this report up. Let's look at the climate outlook here. Again, uh, we're talking about that classic clash of the air masses we got it set up here so we're talking about the 14th through the 18th that's going to that period when that storm system is progressing out the one of two the first one's not nearly as strong the one behind it looking more robust but when you got that when you got that set up in here like that and you got that battleground zone that's what we're going to see uh going in toward the the 14th through the 18th now let's go ahead and step you through this we'll see how this has changed they have revised a little bit on this as far as the outlook compared to what we were seeing yesterday so it does back off the temperatures a little bit, not quite as cool out toward the west here as we go from the 16th to the 22nd, but uh, definitely uh, kind of chipping away that that warm weather. As you saw, it's that cool air kind of moving off toward the east, so it does chip away the, the above normal temperatures a little bit there. The big change from yesterday, I got to say, is the precipitation outlook. It stays a, a little bit elevated here uh, going from the 14th to the 15th. Obviously, you're seeing a little bit of that bullseye out here in the west out toward Wisconsin and Utah and Colorado out there going for that time period there. And then going out from the 8th to the 14th, you notice it's not as dry as what it was showing yesterday. So it looks like we're going to say, whenever I see green and active weather this time of year and stuff, that means the thunderstorm threat is going to be there. And, and obviously what this is showing here is an elevated chance of rain here across the middle of the country. We'll have to watch that closely for obviously thunderstorms and severe weather because we got, as it gets warmer, we got more and more juice to feed those thunderstorms and any kind of clash that sets up with any of the systems kicking out of the Rockies, we're going to get some severe weather. All right, that is y'all's update for today. I hope you guys are appreciating the new format. I kind of like it. A little easier to kind of understand for the, the novices out there and to try to keep you ahead of the storms out there on a regular basis. If you like what you see, please leave me a comment down below. And if there's something you'd like to see, also leave a comment down below. I appreciate you guys' feedback. All right, that's y'all's update for now. You guys have a great and safe weekend. Be good, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next update. Till then, y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.